So once again, welcome, welcome, warm welcome to everyone um, to our collab Friday number 10. I cannot believe we have already the 10th edition of this session. Um, our November collab Friday is where we are going to showcase the most exciting community demos built with Cohere API. This is also the place where you can share your other projects if you're working on something similar-ish or have something in mind and gather feedback. You can also give feedback to the folks that will be presenting today. Uh, I'm Sandra. I'm looking after community at Cohere. We are also going to be joined today by head of machine learning, Ed, and our co-founder, Nick. Um, we have a very exciting agenda for you today. So let me spill the beans. First of all, we are going to share with you, Ed is going to share with you the Cohere hot topic. This is something that is relevant for, for our community, something that um, is hopefully beneficial for you to know. And uh, I hope Ed will make sure that this is something beneficial. Next up, we have three amazing demos. Uh, I'm gonna share with you who will be presenting and what the presentation will be about as they come, feel free to give your feedback either in the chat or in the or directly unmuting yourself, showing your lovely face to us and letting us know what you think. You can also ask questions, you can share your opinions, just feel free to participate in a collaborative spirit as the Collab Friday name suggests. Um, afterwards, we will have the Cohere's demo pick of the month, where Nick Frost, our co-founder, is going to spill the beans on who will be the winner, let's say, the 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 most the the the, the best highlighted um the, the star of, of the show today. Yeah, that's a lot of words to say. Uh, I will judge you and, <laughs> and choose a best one. <laughs> um yes, so yes, Ed has some pressure, Nick has some pressure, my job is done. Now um Towards the end, we are going to close with the upcoming events. So stick around to see what's cooking. Uh, and yeah, I guess we can move on to Cohere Hot Topic. Ed, bring it on. Hey, cool. So I'm really pleased and honored to have been invited to give a, a, a hot topic. And I, I wasn't exactly sure what to talk about given there are so many hot topics. So I, I decided to go for a meta hot topic, which is talking a little bit about Cohere's open source strategy. Um, and this seemed like a good crowd to talk about this too, since this is all a bunch of interested parties sharing their code, what they're building. So it made, you know, it creates a bit of balance for us to talk about, about what we're building and, and how we want to incorporate you in that. So uh, some background um, to just, I guess, frame what I'm about to say. Cohere as a company exists to, to you know, build tools, um, uh, tools which will give computers language. And, and what we want to do is obviously put these tools into your hands, into the hands of the, the broadest class of developers, such that people can start building fast with this technology and, and scale well without having to think about, you know, training the large language models, infrastructure, all these sort of things. And what this means concretely, at least to me, and I suspect to everyone in this lineup here, is um, that this involves us making endpoints and frameworks and libraries which will empower, empower you to, to do this without relying on significant experience with or experience expertise in um, machine learning or in, in natural language processing. Uh, because after all, like everyone here is already a, a competent uh, user of natural language. You're able to you know, speak and understand one another. So in a sense, you're already equipped with all the intuitions um, that would help guide you uh, paired with your creativity towards producing novel solutions, products, services, platforms, perhaps entire companies that uh, have um, language understanding and generation at the heart of your, your own platform and, and products. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of our, 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 our mission statement. But doing this precisely is actually quite hard, right? We are not the ground truth of what is intuitive, of what is usable. We have good ideas about what that means, but really the ground truth is you, is the developers who are going to be building cool stuff with this. And so therefore the best thing we can do is to iterate over the design and release of these tools of these building blocks in a way that incorporates you, the, the community um, all into, that, into that design um, to, that, that takes into account present and also future users. 
So to this end, we're uh, shifting towards a more open, transparent, and communicative mode of development uh, over well, presently and over the next few months, where we're going to be uh, obviously releasing uh, early versions of endpoints exemplifying new capabilities, new use cases, and applications of LLMs in private and public betas. We're going to begin experimenting with new ways of gathering feedback from developers and from the users of uh, the downstream services that these developers produce uh, about the quality of our models and our generations. But today we are already, and perhaps most importantly to this conversation, betting heavily uh, to some degree on this idea of developing in the open through our recently uh, launched uh, open source strategy that we call Cohere Sandbox, exemplifying the notion that we are playing and we invite you into our sandbox to, to build sandcastles with us and perhaps wreck them. So Cohere Sandbox is a collection of uh, GitHub repositories that encompasses demos, frameworks, what we could call proto endpoints that are all at early or highly experimental stages of development. The code that we release under the sandbox label is meant to be you know, polished and of a well self-documented standard. But the features and the design, the functionality, and perhaps even the API itself are going to involve and improve over time. Um, and by doing this in the open, uh, by taking feature requests and issues from users and inviting contributions in the form of pull requests from developers, we're hoping to incorporate you all into this, this evolution of our features, into the evolution of the sort of building blocks that we are uh, trying to put forth in the community in order to ensure that our offering always lines up with what you want and find intuitive as much as possible. So I just want to talk through a little bit about some of our launch projects um, that you can obviously see if you go to uh, the uh, github.com slash cohere dash AI um, and, and look at the projects that have sandbox in the title. Um, we have sandbox toy semantic search, uh, which is a demonstration of how to build from scratch a toy but usable semantic search engine that can uh, be built and deployed over you know, your documents, your intranet, you know, whatever document collection you want to throw at it using Cohere's platform. We have Sandbox Grounded QA, which uh, Nick Frost here uh, built a super, super cool demo of uh, grounded question answering, meaning something where you can ask questions from the models and retrie retrieve answers not from their memory, not from what they've seen in their training data, but from them incorporating live Google search uh, into how they answer you and obviously provide, uh, they're able to provide evidence for, for their answers so that you can check if they're right or wrong uh, based on the, 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 the ground truth of what Google provided. Um, we have a Sandbox Accelerating Chatbot Training, which is a quite a mouthful to say, but is a, a framework for uh, helping you produce a zero shot uh, routing if you're producing dialogue agents. If you want to produce conversational agents, in particular, moving towards grounded conversational agents, we have um, Sandbox. Um, doo -doo -doo. We have Sandbox Conversant Lib, which is a library for um, producing conversational uh, intelligence and personas built on top of our large language models. And we're going to be putting a lot of effort into producing customized models that are going to power this library going forward. So watch this space. And finally, assuming I haven't missed one, we have Sandbox Topically, um, which is a, a, topic, a bunch of topic modeling helper functions built on top of the language models if you want to automatically uh, name text clusters uh, if you have a bunch of documents in order to make them more interpretable uh, or usable. So please check out these repositories, try them out, you know, tell us what works, tell us what doesn't work, um, you know, read the code, use it for inspiration, you know, use it to help you understand kind of and get better intuitions about how large language models work. But more importantly, we hope you're going to use it for your own projects, fork the repositories, you know, build something completely different and, uh, and obviously come back and tell us about it on Discord or via email or if, you're, uh, if we're fortunate to meet you in person. Um, we really can't wait to see the cool stuff that you're going to be able to build on top of our experimental code, you know, enabled uh, by it or, or just empowered by reading it and forming an intuition about something completely different from that code base, but that, you know, you would have had a bit more trouble building before you sort of saw, oh, it's actually really easy to do this. We're obviously going to continue to release repositories which showcase these sort of mature and sophisticated uses of large language models, uh, frameworks that support the development of these applications and endpoints which provide more intuitive building blocks for you to base products and services on, as we say, as we hope uh, perhaps entire companies on. But ultimately, on our end, we're always anticipating and expecting and in fact looking forward constantly being surprised by the creative new ways in which developers like yourselves are going to use this technology and in turn, you know, help us through this communication, adapt our platform more quickly to better serve your needs in the response. 
So that's my, the end of my uh, seven minute of spicy meta hot topic. Uh, I'm <laughs> really looking forward to uh, sticking around for at least the next 15 minutes and hearing about some of these projects and obviously uh, seeing the rest in the recording. Thanks everyone. Awesome, thank you so much, Ed. Uh, wow, 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 that was really, really nice uh, introduction to the sandbox. Uh, guys, I pasted some of the links that Ed mentioned on our chat. So you can check out the blog post describing the projects and also, I think I pasted GitHub repo to grounded Q and I bot. But if you go to our Cohere uh, AI repo, you will find all the projects um, there and you can build from there. Thank you so much. Also, a uh, really big invite to our Discord. Grounded Q and I bot is actually deployed as a bot in our Discord, so you can poke it, um, ask some questions, make sure it's. Uh, does or does not answer them so we can improve um, if, it, if it does not answer them in case it doesn't. Um, there's also a special channel for Topically and there is a channel for uh, conversion. So if you want to talk about these projects, if you want to develop something on top of it, check out our Discord and you'll get support from the community. Uh, Alrighty, then we are ready to move on to our demos, the jewel of tonight. So we will first um, start with Efkan Goktepe's demo, who built an app that scrapes transcripts from the Canadian parliament and summarizes them into easy to read blogs. I am super looking forward to the demo of this project. And uh, remember that after the presentation, feel free to unmute yourself uh, or just ask your question in the in the chat section, and I'm gonna convey it instead of you. So, without further ado, Efkan, go ahead. All right, perfect. Uh, hey, everybody, thanks for having me. Um, today, I'm presenting a project called Congress. Uh, this is a project that me and my friends built for one of uh, UFT's hackathons. Uh, I had a lot of fun, so I hope everybody here enjoys as well, and uh, we can get started. Um, all right, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Perfect, perfect. All right, um, so I'll just begin by introducing myself. Um, I'm Efcon. I'm a fourth year student at University of Toronto. I'm studying computer science. And uh, some of my interests are the self-driving car industry. Um, I love music and I have a blast attending hackathons. So um, a little bit on how I was introduced to NLP. I took a course that I really enjoyed at U of T called um, Intro to Machine Learning and Data Mining. It taught us a lot about how to like build these models and you know their specific use cases, their parameters, et cetera, uh, as well as my friend Harun. Uh, he's a really smart engineer. He currently works at Amazon and um, he has like many, many cool repositories on uh, like, um, you know, NLP tools for different languages. So go check him out if you'd like. And uh, nowadays, there are a lot of cool companies that um, basically dumb down the very complex engineering that's needed to build NL NLP tools. Maybe you've heard of Wombo. Uh, they provide like AI generated images based on text prompts. There's Cohere, of course, with a fully fledged NLP toolkit. And there's VoiceFlow, which um, allows you to build very sophisticated chatbots and voice assistants without any programming. Um, so really, really cool companies. I think they're all relatively new. Uh, at least the, the ones here. Um, and okay, so let's let's talk about Congress. Um, so quick show of hands. I'd like to ask the audience, uh, how many of you have watched a Canadian Parliament hearing or read through a Canadian Parliament transcript? Um, could I get maybe like if you could react with the emoji, like your raise your hand? Um, well, about okay. So I, I see one hand. Um, yeah, so about what I was expecting. Um, right. So, uh, you know, it's it's kind of common, you know, among the people I've asked, not a lot of us really tune into parliament hearings other than like what we see on the news. So um, why is this? Uh, according to the Privacy, Privacy Commissioner of Canada, 54% of Canadians feel unaware of how government decisions are made. Uh, and our only exposure to like what goes on in the parliament is like, um, you know, what, what we see on the news when like an MP insults another MP with something funny and, you know, it makes the headlines. 
But uh, the parliament is like, um, what goes on in the parliament is very, very important for our everyday lives. You know, uh, the things that are discussed affects the economy, taxes, basically, you know, provisions for a lot of people's livelihoods. Um, so very, very important things that I believe it would help for us to be informed about. But unfortunately, not, not a lot of Canadians, not a lot of us know. Um, so why is this? If you've ever seen a parliament transcript, and I'll be showing one in a second, they're very lengthy, over 15,000 words. They have a lot of jargon. Uh, therefore, they're difficult to understand. Not all, the not all the information is relevant to us. There's a lot of like organizational things that really don't concern the public. And the average Canadian reads at a pace of 250 words per minute. And when you do the math, that's over an hour of reading for a single transcript. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll actually just briefly show what one of those transcripts look like. looks like. Um, so here's the transcript on the discussion on June 1st, 2021 for Bill S-222. Uh, it's, you know, very, very lengthy. So as, as the text said, about 15,000 words, around 100 to 150 paragraphs on average. Um, and it's it's not like a novel, you know, not pleasant to read through. Right. So what does Congress aim to do? Uh, hopefully Congress aims to make these very long, jargon-heavy technical transcripts into bite-sized pieces that the average Canadian can have, uh, like consume among their, their morning coffee. So the goal is to translate an hour or more of reading into about a 30 second read and reduce these 15,000 word transcripts to around hundred words in summaries. And of course, this is accomplished using Cohere API, which makes it really, really easy for us and minimizes the amount of like machine learning engineering that, that has to be done. And uh, I'd, I'd briefly like to mention this project was completed in only 36 hours, and that that's you know uh, where the power of Cohere really came in. So uh, here's a little bit of art that my friend prepared for um, you know to introduce the website, and I'll be moving on to the website now. Uh, if any of you would like to check out the website, by the way, uh, this is the um, the GitHub URL that you can check out. Instructions on setup are in the README. I'll just paste this into the chat in case anyone would like to check it out simultaneously. Here we go. Okay, oh, before I move on there. So this is what our app looks like. Uh, maybe I'll just go back to the home page. All right, uh, the House of Commons via artificial intelligence. So if I hit get started, basically what we have here is for each of the recent hearings in the Canadian Parliament, I say recent, but our, our data set is actually a little dated, but um, for the sake of demonstration, I think that's okay. Uh, for, you'll have most recent hearings on this web page. Uh, the, the most recent one up here and then like the subsequent ones down here. Uh, what we've done is we pull in these, we web scrape these transcripts from the Senate of Canada's website. Uh, we subsample some of the paragraphs from them. So like I said earlier, there are 100 to 150 paragraphs in each transcript. And based on our study, uh, the most relevant information and where the decision-making happens is actually in uh, usually like the middle, uh, the median 10 paragraphs. So we'll take those, we'll pass them onto Cohere API's text summarization feature, and then we'll summarize them down to the point where we have only four sentences. So uh, once we have that, we can also, uh, what we also do is like pass the summary of the summary once again to Cohere API to get hopefully only the topic of what's being discussed. And we're passing that topic over to Wombo API, which is giving us these images. So none of these images were drawn by myself or someone else. These were all generated by Wombo API based on the topic that was inferred from you know, the, the summary. So uh, this tells me like the man with the mask, it's probably something about COVID-19 or maybe like hospitals. Uh, this, uh, they look like students to me and I, I see the word study here. Uh, this looks like uh, something that's being done for like Aboriginal communities. So, you know, uh, just a little fun factor on top of what's being provided here to make it a little more bite-sized, a little more enjoyable. Um, okay, so does anyone have any questions so far?
Okay. If not, oh, wait, I'll sorry. one one question. Your yes. summarization thing. Can you are you later going to show the prompt of how you did that? Um, surely, yeah, I can go into the script that passes the uh, the snippet to Cohere API for sure. That'd be cool. Okay, if there are any other questions, feel free to interrupt me. That's completely fine. Um, so for each of these hearings, for each of these summaries, let's say you know one of them in particular caught your interest and you want to learn more. So this one specifically, uh, there's a learn more button here. And if you hit that, it'll actually take you to the full transcript. So, you know, if it really catches their interest, then, you know, uh, the hook is there, then you can just go on and read about all of what happened uh, in its entirety. All right. And now I'll just finish off by touching on uh, the architecture and how it's done. I didn't talk about it, but here's, here's just a visualization. So to recap, our web scraper and subsampler pulls the data from the Parliament of Canada's website. That's passed on to Cohere API, then we get the summary, then that's passed on to Wombo API. And then that final result, so summary plus image, that's combined in a collector in the back end, which stores all this information in a database. So if this entire pipeline were to run every time a user connected, that would be you know, terrible design. It would be a lot of processing power and the website would be very slow. So instead, uh, what we have is ideally when you set this up on a server, right now it's only in GitHub, you'd have like um, a Linux job scheduler to run like um, data scraping jobs regularly. So every day of the week, it would scrape data and then process it and then store it in the database. So whenever a user connects to the website, they're only calling data from the database um, as per every three tiered uh, website. And that's the end of the presentation. Um, I also would like to briefly mention my inspiration for this project. So for one of my internships, I got the chance to work on a really cool project called Parlor Watch. Essentially what Parlor Watch does is, is what I just described to you, uh, summarizing parliament hearings, but you know, they do it in a really cool fashion. They have a lot of different tools like you know, sentimental analysis and um, they have a Twitter bot that basically uh, actually finds the snippets that they've summarized and then gets the video from like the parliament's website and then posts it on Twitter. Um, so a lot of cool tech, I'd implore you to check it out. And um, it, they have their machine learning model built in-house, which I know required a lot of investment and a lot of like engineers, uh, but, but it's cool. It's very uh, noble for me as like a student to be able to semi-replicate this in a very short time uh, through, through tools like Cohere. And yeah, that's, that's all on my end. Thank you very much. Once again, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to, to hear them. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, super sick presentation uh, and project. I'm really stoked that you came and, uh, and shared it with us today. I will um, encourage, again, folks to, if you have any questions, to follow up on how this stuff works, or if you uh, would like to give feedback on why do you think it makes sense or it doesn't make sense, uh, please uh, let us know. You can just unmute yourself or leave your com comments in the chat. Um, Ed actually was uh, catching a flight, so he had to go, but he mentioned that it's super awesome and looks like it will make politics a lot more appealing and approachable to many. This is actually connected to my question, which is, um, how, how do you think, like when I saw this nicely visualized landing page with pictures and, you know, just like little summaries, I was thinking this, this would probably be like an awesome newsletter to be sent out to Canadian citizens to keep in touch when it comes to the parliament's, you know, shenanigans and, and stuff that's going on. Um, how do you think, it could be, you know, implemented by the government or by folks that care to spread the word about what's going on in the, in the parliament. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a wonderful question. Um, me and my friends did actually study this for a little bit. Like, how do people consume information? Uh, we came to the conclusion that it was mostly through just social media and news. Uh, so the, the idea of a newsletter sounded pretty enticing because it would be weird for us to go to like each news institution and then ask them to like uh, host our articles or host these summaries. Uh, and in fact, they might just want to do it themselves. I, I, 
it didn't seem very, very probable. Uh, so a newsletter was one option. Another was to have Instagram and Twitter bots, actually. So after each data scraping job, once the data is there, the summarization is there, have the bot uh, share this on Instagram and Twitter. So it's in people's feeds. It's not just in your email box, but at this day and age, I think it's kind of, uh, we're checking social media unintentionally. So whatever we see on social media is being fed to us. Hence all the you know ethical discussions in, in the Senate and like these tech testimonials. So if we get our summarizations in social media and like in people's timelines and feeds, um, that might also be a great way of keeping like Canadians informed. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, Mitchell has a question. Mitchell, do you want to chime in? Or should I read it for you? I'm gonna read it for you. So um, question to you, Afghan. What is something you learned by iterating on the prompt or working with the generation models? Okay, um, so iterating on the prompt. Uh, one thing, one trouble that we ran into was, of course, these uh, articles are very long. Uh, um, hence the paragraphs are long as well. Each paragraph, it, it ranges, it can be 100 words, it can be 500 words. But when you pass 500 words into uh, Cohere's text summarization, it kind of gives you like issues. Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't accept after a certain number of words. I can't recall what that number is. But even if you pass at the limit, it can be a little less accurate than what you'd hope for, given these are also like kind of technical topics sometimes that are discussed in Parliament. So what we did was uh, we couldn't rely entirely on the API, but we had to do something called sum sampling. So to do like proper subsampling, we'd have to find based on the statistics where the most relevant information was stored in these lengthy transcripts. We determined it was like, as I mentioned, in the median 10 paragraphs. And when we got to those paragraphs, we actually were cutting off so, uh, sometimes the, the first sentence, sometimes the last sentence, and sometimes like a couple sentences from the start and end based on how long the, the paragraph was. So we had to choose the words we were passing to the API carefully for, for summarization. Uh, and that was like, um, yeah, one thing that we had to do to improve like the accuracy of, of the entire project. And also something uh, interesting, like something that caught our attention with regards to Cohere API, and I was meaning to ask this sometime, was that we couldn't use the API without like the previous prompt that was in, in the sandbox. So what we did was we had the history of prompts that were given as exemplars in, in the sandbox, and we had to add on our, our summarization text after that. Um, but yeah, th those are those are the interesting things that we ran into. Thanks for asking the question for me. I was trying to find the mute button. Um, that is an interesting piece of feedback. And also um, how you approach summarization is a bit different than um, we've heard in the past, or we've tried in the past, um, essentially because typically you'll have um, some kind of inherent summary within the first part of the text or the last part of the text. But I like your thought process of taking the most meaty bits and then trying to create a rich summary from that. So that's that's interesting. So thanks for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think like the entire motive of our decisions were based on how Canadian Parliament transcripts were structured. So if you take a look, there's a lot of like formalities and disclaimers people have to give, like, you know, um, a MP might start off their sentence saying, you know, I by no means want to say this, but it's important to think of this. And it, they beat around the bush before they get to their actual point. So um, sure. we found that to be useful just in the context of this project. Interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, so Nick asked before to see the prompt. Do you want to show it? To oh us? yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so I'll just navigate to the GitHub. Um, uh, so, so would you would you like to see the prompt or the code that actually handles passing the prompt to the API? Oh, I I want to see like the specific formatting of your of your summarization prompt. Of course. Yeah. So, so um, this actually my friend worked on. So I'll just take a second to find it here. Um, 
if I can't find it right away, I might yeah, just you can you can just post it in the Discord later. I just, yeah, I, I can yeah, I can yeah, do that. Yeah. That'd be great. And you can post it in the share your prompt channel. And if you if you have it saved, like if you were playing it in the playground, you can export it just directly from there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks so much. Yeah, really cool stuff. Hey, thank you as well. Thank you. Um, we know Rubik had a question. Rubik, do you want to ask this yourself? You can just answer. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, I've just I've um, looked before about projects that will be presented today, and I saw your project, and it's very, very interested. Interesting. It's just I'm also lo looking to how to process big amount of information stored in audio and extract. Uh, uh, interesting moments and um, I have thought about how to um, correctly segment um, these parts of len lengthy transcripts um, into like um, um, coherent topics for example you know when um, there is a podcast and um, uh, sometimes podcasters split um, like their um, whole, whole part uh, whole podcast into parts uh, with some more or less um, coherent um, information, coherent topics. And um, I wanted to ask if uh, uh, you thought about this um, in your project. Okay, um, so if I understand your question correctly, it's about um, like semantic analysis, like inferring the topic or like m emotion from, from the text, right? Uh, no, it's more about like how to uh, split uh, document, transcript or um, whatever into um, uh, parts that are mm. like semantically grouped or we can look from the other direction so we have like bunch of sentences like this mm. uh, is sequential uh, and so we can chunk them together because they have a similar topic mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh, so our method um, it, it may be very hacky I don't know if it's <laughs> brilliant engineering, but I'd like to give a disclaimer saying we had 36 hours for the project, but basically what we did was we we spent our time studying, and ideally a machine would do this, but I don't know, like without any reinforcement learning, uh, the machine couldn't, of course, say, hey, this is accurate, it's not accurate, but basically what we did was, you know, go through these transcripts ourselves. We went through like 10 or 15 transcripts, and we look at the start here, and, you know, uh, the chair is introducing the the, the room to the senators and all that. And then I, I go a little more down and then, you know, we're still like doing introductions and comments and this and that. And then one, so subsampling is, I think um, what what your question is ask, actually asking about. Uh, we had to subsample, you can't pass the entire thing. So what, what part of like the transcript do you choose? We just eyeballed it really. So we would scroll down, typically like around here, we would find that, you know, the most relevant content is, is, is nested. And then if the paragraph is too long, say we, our subsampler chose this paragraph. Um, we, we, now we, we studied 15 transcripts. Now we're studying paragraphs. We went through probably 30, 40 paragraphs and saw like most of the time, like 90, 95% of the time, um, the information that we would like to present on the website is just like here and the rest we don't really want to portray so we were like you know what um 10 margin of error five percent margin of error it's not too bad for a project that's put together quickly uh but it long story short like all the analysis was manual and it was um it was it was brought to a point where we we said hey we, we might have some errors but not so much that it would make the project like unfeasible. Oh, um, I, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, that's interesting. But uh, um, have you thought about uh, using embeddings uh, to um, like compare different sentences uh, to one another? So like we can embed each sentence and uh, we can um, like use some algorithms uh, to uh, group the sentences um, by their meanings. Uh, so it, I think it also can work like um, to um, uh, select uh, sentences that are more important and like uh, find sentences that are like aging and just uh, some, some water 
um, and uh, this way we can um, like find uh, like groups of uh, topics and uh, uh, to extract them this way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that sounds like really, really enticing and a great way to improve the project. Uh, so we didn't have any of those methods incorporated in our design. But honestly, like I'm really interested in, you know, uh, incorpor incorporating this, these things in, in the code base as well. So uh, it, I'd be very happy if you maybe like I could show you around the repo offline and or maybe you can just view it yourself. And uh, if you could make like um, a pull request with some of these methods implemented, I'd love to check out like what you uh, what you're talking about. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't have any. Of these. We just did it all manually, which is very impractical compared to what you're telling me. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm awesome. very happy. So, um, sorry, like sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, let's let's take this conversation to our Discord or maybe to GitHub. Uh, I'm so sorry for cutting you off, folks. It was an interesting cover, but we have two more demos tonight, so we need to move on. Thank you so much, Efkan. Once again, congrats on your demo. And uh, next up is Vinosh. Vinosh is working on debate, which is an app uh, that is conversational AI designed to debate about an article or topic of your choice. Vinish, bring it on. We cannot hear you yet. Maybe you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can well. hear you. We can hear you and we see your presentation. So you can Brilliant. Go okay. Um, great. So yes, hi everyone. So my name is Vinish and I'm here to talk about my application, which is called Debate. And as Sandra said, it's basically a conversational AI, which is capable of debating about any topics. So uh, first, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. So I have a bit of a mixed background. I I'm a mechanical engineer turned software engineer, and I absolutely love building things. Um, whether that's hands-on building robots or working on software projects or just creating absurd projects in my head that never comes alive. But one thing I am very passionate about is NLP. So I take any opportunity I have to get involved in NLP projects, whether that's hackathons uh, with Cohere, personal projects or work projects. And my journey in NLP started back in 2016, where I tried to build this virtual assistant and I came across word vectors um, for synonyms. And ever since then, over the years, I have worked with various machine learning models to build projects around um, NLP. So coming back to the project, um, have you ever sat um, on your phone, scroll through Twitter and seen most of the most absurd tweets. And these tweets are not coming from the everyday user, but people in significant positions. These are from your bosses, social media influencers, tech billionaires, and even leaders of countries. I'm not pointing my fingers at anyone. So it's become a popularity contest. And often these people can completely polarize their large followings, which are in the millions. And the issue is no one checks what these people are saying. It could be complete lies, or it could be really coherent, well-referenced, well-written, brilliantly articulated piece of absolute lies. That's right. It's hard to differentiate fake and real news in this world. And the label on Twitter isn't going to be enough. But my solution is not with social media but the social media consumers, the followers, people like me and you. So my app simply questions, argues, debates these polarizing statements made by influencers. Think of it as a bot that essentially starts a conversation with the opposing view, encouraging critical thinking and encouraging you to research further into the topic. And that's debate. Well, the app is still constantly being developed. And at the moment, the app you're about to see was developed only in 48 hours over a hackathon. There is a lot of improvements to be made, but I do have a demo. And here you'll be able to debate with the AI system about a particular topic in a conversation style. 
And uh, for this demo, I have chosen the topic to be space exploration. And I'm gonna ask um, some of the viewers to kind of chip in. And if you have any suggestions of what questions to ask or statements, can you just start thinking? And I'm gonna ask these suggestions in a second. So can everyone see this, um, can you, uh, the actual application? Oh, yes. yeah, cool, okay. So over here on the left, you can see the article that's being discussed. Um, and then we can, as a user, put our input here. And you can see on the right here, the AI's responses, which is in blue, and what the user has written. So one more thing before we get started. Um, you can see these tags over here. It's like statement, agree, curious, statement. So this is using Cohere's classify. And we're classifying these inputs, the user input and the AI input. And we're classifying them so that in the next prompt, we can actually use this to generate what we want. For example, we might want the AI to reply in agreement or in disagreement. And that's what we're trying to get out here. But also it gives a, uh, an indicator to the, to, to the people using the app as to what's happening here. So if, does anyone have any questions or any statements they would like me to uh, put in here to, regarding space exploration? Uh, let me see if I can see the chat box. Statements as in any sort of negative, positive, neutral statements? Anything, anything at all, yeah. Um, anything to do with space exploration. It could be a question. You can see how the AI reacts to that. Okay, space exploration is a waste of time. Okay, space exploration is a waste of time. So we will now submit it. So you can see the response takes roughly about 4.6 seconds. And this is what the AI came back with. It's agreeing, it says, sure, if you're not sending people to space, you're not actually doing anything. Anything? That you know, sounds or... like a mixed sort of message. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the, the coherence is actually one of, one of the issues. Um, you might not have it agreeing to one side, you might kind of change its mind between. Maybe how, how humans do too. But uh, any any other questions you'd like to ask or anyone who wants to follow on from this? Yeah, do you want to ask a question of whether or not, like what, if you could make an argument for or against the privatization of space exploration? Okay. So would you like to go for or against? Can we just ask, yeah, yeah, what, or can we just say like, what do you, do you think space exploration should be privatized? I think space exploration should be prioritized because if it were private, then it would cost less and the safety would be better. And again, you can see that the classification is also here. So when there's a question being asked, it comes, it gets classed as curious. And then you also have the user agreeing with the statement. Nice. Um, um, Stanley has another question. What are the major obstacles to reaching Mars? Okay, yeah, sure. It will be very expensive and the technology is still not there to land on Mars. Even if we do reach it, the technology isn't there to explore the planet. It's, it's really crazy how well it can respond based on the little data that, that we're providing Cohere with. And, and it always almost makes sense as well. Uh, but yeah, unless we have any other inputs, we, if not, we can... And nicely done. Thanks for, thanks for demoing. Yeah. That's right, yeah, sure. Um, so just go back to my... Yeah, so this is actually a pretty short demo compared to the other ones. So thank you. If you do want to play around the project by yourself, you can either use a QR code or I'll also post the, um, the link below. 
Also connect with me on LinkedIn and you can check out the whole um, code on GitHub and also my other projects as well. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm open for any questions you have regarding uh, the project. Yeah, I think if there are any other questions, we should probably take them to Discord, but uh, free to, feel free to keep the conversation going there. Yes, let's, um, because we're running short of time. Um, awesome demo, thank you so much for, you. for sharing with us. Uh, please make sure to post it in, post it in the Discord channel. I'm gonna create a separate thread for this event. So guys, if you have any questions to Vinush, you can reach him individually or you can reach him via Discord on our forum. Um, next up, we have Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thank you again. So final demo of tonight is Jonathan, uh, who built an app which improves the efficiency of child-based support systems by automating repetitive parts of the workflow. Jonathan, come Great. forward. Excellent. Uh, can you guys hear me and see my screen? We can hear you. And you we... can see my screen? Not yet. Not yet, OK. Hang on a sec. Yep, now we can see our screen. Okay, excellent. So <laughs> I've got like seven minutes. So I'm going to talk really fast. And I'd, I'd like to think it's because I think quickly, but I think it's because the fact I, I literally have seven minutes. So uh, let's, let's uh, jump straight to it. So uh, traditional customer service web chat is dead. Uh, and that, that's because of the experience that I've had over the years. So let me give you a bit of context. So often when I work with a, a service agent, I get things like, oh, can I have a couple of minutes to, to um, you know, to research your issue? Or uh, can you give me a, a little bit of time while I make notes? And it's just a, a really poor experience in general. And so, uh, you know, if you go back to, to the actual business challenges that you have, uh, you know, to, to train these service agents, it often takes uh, days or weeks, uh, and it comes as a cost to the business because these um, service agents can't be, uh, you know, they, they can't uh, contribute to the business because they're being trained, uh, you know, understanding the product and so on. And then it's just in, in general, just really poor um, uh, customer experience because you're, you're waiting while they research issues, you're waiting while they're making notes and so on. Uh, and then most people don't even stay to the end to, uh, you know, um, provide any sort of feedback and uh, and those who actually stay back are the ones who are really annoyed and so it's not really reflective of the uh, the actual experience right and so you can understand why most people are, are frustrated with uh, customer service web chat but maybe there's another way uh, introducing cohere chat right and i'm going to uh, suggest that the the benefits that you have with cohere chat are it reduces the time to train your staff uh, and also uh, it increase, increases the productivity of the agents and i'll show you why uh, in a couple of minutes time and it reduces costs because you have uh, you might need fewer uh, fewer customer agents working with more customers right and one of the nice things is it it automates a whole load of things like you know the chat duration the chat summary uh, the sentiment of the chat and and so on uh, and uh, so I think what's what's particularly special about Co Cohere Chat is that it it basically uses the entire Cohere stack, right? So it uses generate, it uses classify, uh, it uses embed. So that's with semantic search. And then like the, the most recently released thing, which is uh, conversant from the sandbox. Uh, and so let's kick things off uh, by talking about cold frames, right? So in, in the UK, uh, if you're a gardener, uh, you know, you, you're going to look for something like a, a cold frame. And, and this is basically like a box that's made out of either uh, um, plastic or, or wood, which you, you store your plants in so that they can uh, survive the winter, right? And the things that you really care about uh, in your cold frame are, are basically the, you know, what is it made out of? Uh, and then the dimensions, things like, you know, the width and the depth and the height so that you know, where, you know whether you can, uh, your, your plants will fit in and whether they can uh, survive the winter. Uh, so let me provide a little bit of context, right? So, so let's assume uh, that uh, you're having a conversation between someone who's bought a uh, one of these cold frames, right, uh, and uh, and a customer service agent, right? So I'm going to show you a demo of that, and uh, so let's kick things off with. Um, so let's say this is the customer support, and we've got a customer chat over here. Right, and I'm gonna just split my screen so that you can see both. So we've got, 
So that's your customer chat over here and that's your customer support, right? So let's say we're having a conversation between the two, right? And so uh, kick things off by, you know, the customer trying to get the attention of the customer support agent and, um, and I'm assuming you guys can still see my screen, right? And so you should be able to see these two chats there, right? And so uh, he's, he said, hi, right? Now with large language models, I, I believe they've always been they're there to always use with a human in the loop. I, I don't think la large language models are, you know, especially if you're going to take them seriously, um, they're not supposed to be used um, independently, right? And so what you have here is um, th the first option is, is basically prompting a, the, the large language model, right? Uh, and getting a response back. And the other two are basically responses that you're getting back from high uh, using semantic search. So they're not particularly relevant at this time, but what you have are these three responses. The first one's great, right? So that, that makes really good sense. So let's just go ahead and send that. So how can I help you today? Uh, and so now you, you, let's say you've gone and bought one of these uh, Rollins and cold frames that we spoke about earlier, right? So, um, so let's say, what is the width of the uh, Rollins and cold frame? Right, and you send that off to the uh, customer support chat. And so what the customer support chat is going to do is they're going to have some options. Now, because my um, uh, the, uh, the the text is a little bit long, it goes a little bit funny on my screen, right? So um, further iterations, we'll probably have to work on that. But um, what we're looking for is an answer. And so uh, the, the first one seems pretty uh, reasonable, right? Uh, what's the width of the Rollins and uh, timber coal frame? It's three foot uh, four inches. So that seems like a really good response, but except this has come from the knowledge base, right? So I don't want to include both the question and the answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit my response, right? And so just give myself a bit more space here. And I'm gonna say, uh, it's just three foot and four inches, right? And I'm gonna send, and I'm gonna send that back. Now let's imagine that you, you know you're a really, really disappointed customer. Like, uh, uh, so so that's that's rubbish, right? Um, because uh, that's way too. Let's say that's too large for my garden. So right, that's uh, way too large for my garden. Um, so I hate it, right? Oh, so uh, so uh, I I want to return it, and I want a refund. Okay, so we send that across to the uh, customer service agent. So that's your response back as a customer. Uh, and let's see what options are available to us as a customer service agent. So let's go ahead and, and so again, the, the bottom two are based on semantic search. So uh, related to the product, not that helpful to us. Let's look at the, that final one now. Uh, again, apologies for the UI. This can be uh, improved on in further iterations. So let me just go ahead and see what the options are. And so the response back from the uh, from conversant, right? So that's the cohere chat prompt is, I'm so sorry to hear that. Please, can you send me the address details and I'll sort out the re return and refund for you. That's brilliant, right? That's exactly what you would want to say. So let's not modify that. Let's just send it as is, right? And now as a customer, okay, basically what I need to send is my address. So let's say it's, uh, you know, 15, uh, Rhyme Road. Uh, let's say it's in um, we're in Reading in in the UK, and let's say it's RG two uh, five one uh, RG two five uh, AA, right? Uh, and so we send that across to the customer service agent. Now let's see what options are available to us as the customer service agent, right? And so again, let me just uh, give myself a bit more space here. Uh, so understood. So, so again, the, the last two are with regards to semantic search. Again, not helpful because we're not really looking for product information. Uh, the, the first one says, understood, I've just checked out the order and it looks like our shipping was delayed. So, so unfortunately, uh, the prompt from the, the language model didn't get it right, right? So what we need to do, uh, and let's have a look at that entire statement is it. So understood, I've just checked out the order and it looks like our shipping was delayed. It should be sent out by the end of today. Now, th that's, that, that isn't correct. And this is exactly why you need a human in the loop when working with a large language model, right? Instead, what we need to say is, uh, great, uh, I'll sort out your return now, right? That, that seems like a, a pretty good response from a customer service chat, right? Uh, and so we send that back out. I've got that response. And it said, uh, and so uh, I'd be pretty happy with that as a, uh, as a customer, right? So I'm just gonna respond back with thanks and let's see what options are available to me uh, now. So, so no problem at all. Is there anything I, I can help you with? So no problem at all. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Okay, so great response. I, I don't think I need to modify that. So let me go ahead and send that back to the customer. And uh, so, nope. So send that back. 
Uh, and you can see it's pretty, you, you know, the amount of typing that I've had to do as a customer service agent is, has been quite limited. So, and we're done, right? Thank you for your time today and for getting in touch with us. Have a nice day. Brilliant, right? I, I, I couldn't think of a better way of seeing it. And this is again from Conversant. So send that back and we're done, right? So as a customer service agent, I'm going to close, as a customer service, I'm going to close that. Now, if that wasn't good enough, right? So it's now 5.58 in the UK, right? So I can go to a chat log that's automatically generated for this, right? So 5.58 on the 25th of November. Now, assume that if I was to log into the system, right? Um, you know, I, I could actually get my credentials from there. I've just hard coded a name and I've just called the work ID Jack Doors, right? And again, you know, as a customer, I, I could have perhaps entered my my order ID and then I could have got the customer ID there. But I've just generated, I've just uh, hard coded these two uh, just to show you what it could look like. Uh, we can see here that the duration of the chat was five minutes and 27 seconds, right? And you can see that in general, uh, it, the the sentiment was positive, right? We can get an overview that, you know, the, 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 uh, the sentiment was, uh, uh, 0 0.37, uh, uh, so 37% negative, 52% positive. So not, not overwhelmingly positive, right? And neutral at 11%. And then what's really special is that we actually have a summary of the chat. So a customer wants to return an item as it's too large for their garden, right? And it's been able to generate this summary by using Cohere Generate to generate the summary based on, the, uh, on what the customer has sent. Uh, here, right? And so uh, if you actually want the entire customer chat log, it's available he uh, here to you. So, so let's say, you know, you were someone who was, uh, you wanted to, to have the entire customer chat log for um, auditing purposes and so on. That's all available to you over here, right? And so we've got everything that we might want um, um, over here. So let's just head back to uh, just wrapping things up, right? So one of the challenges that you had was initially was training uh, training your customer service agents, right? Now with uh, Cohere Generate, right? With things like uh, generating questions from this text, we can actually create this knowledge base by using a low temperature and generating questions based on the text that will create that knowledge base for you, right? Uh, one of the challenges you had was, you know, uh, researching issues and, and this delay for customers in general, right? One of the nice things now that if we use uh, Cohere Embed along with Semantic Search and Conversant, right? Uh, you actually have these options where you provide these two options from semantic search and one of them from conversant, right? And this helps to, uh, you know, this helps the customer service agent. And so that uh, reduces the time um, uh, with researching issues, right? And then uh, things like, you know, uh, having to make notes and so on and so on. Well, all of that's now automated. Uh, and you've seen that with that PDF that's automatically generated that provides, you know, the duration, the sentiment and a summary of the uh, entire chat. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, if there's no need to actually have a post call survey because we can actually take um, all of the information that we have from the customer chat uh, and create and, and using um, um, Cohere Classify, right? Use sentiment analysis to determine how that chat actually went, right? And so I'm hoping that with Cohere Chat, customer service web chat might not be dead after all. Thanks for listening, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Jonathan. Oh, once again, that was awesome demo. I'm equally impressed by the demo as by your ability to speed things up. We do not have time for feedback or questions, but I encourage you folks to go and approach Jonathan individually or via Discord, where he will be posting links to his project. Now, we are a little bit uh, behind the time, but let us quick stick around because we quickly want to share with you the so here's pick of the month. It will be actually Nick that will be spilling the beans. Um, just, just, a, just a quick uh, recap of what that entails. First of all, um, the winner will have one-on-one -on -one mentorship session with Nick himself. Uh, he will be also rewarded by Discord badge effective after this week and uh, will be featured on all our social media platforms when we, we will be giving extra promotional love to this project. So yeah, Nick, go ahead. Uh, sweet, yeah, I really, really loved all three of the, uh, all three of the, uh, the projects. Um, I think I, choosing between one of them was difficult. <laughs> um, I think for, 
Yeah, here. So I think I think the one I loved about this most recent one was that you really used like every single component of Cohere, which I find is very cool. And the idea of like taking together open source stuff that we've done and piecing it together and making something that's like really tangible um, was very, uh, yeah, was super cool. Um, the second one, the dialogue one, I think that's like the the one for like learning about a subject through debate. That's, I think, one of the most creative applications I've seen of it. I have never seen somebody use that, like the generative debate tool as a as a tool for learning and understanding. Um, and that was really, really sweet. Um, and then the first one, which was summarizing uh, Canadian government things like a that's like actually super useful <laughs> and relevant to Canada. Like I have watched a few uh, government things, but I've never read the transcripts because they're too long. And I love that you recreated something like a, a pretty much a finished project and recreated something that somebody else has been working on forever with custom models, like with us in 30 hours. So like, they're all really, really incredible. Um, to choose one that I think is the best, I think I will, I will go with this last one. Um, just because seeing something that was like pretty close to shippable and delivering real value, like I could imagine this almost as is being helpful to a customer service agent and seeing it piece together all the different things was like particularly cool. Um, but all three were amazing. All three were were very uh, good in different ways, which was super cool. So thanks so much for presenting everybody. Um, and congratulations to you for being the pick of the month. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Congrats, Jonathan. Great, thank you. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much. So now, final, uh, final thing. We want to take a group pick if you care. So please make a cute face or a goofy face. It's up to you. And we will make a photo in three, two, one. Go. <laughs> Never get it right. Wonderful. Nick is probably winning this one again, <laughs> just like last time. Thank you so much. Um, I want to share with you the upcoming events. If I have the presentation, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, make sure to sign up for upcoming call up Friday. Uh, also, if you want to sign up with your demo, we have a link to the sign up form in the Discord. You have this little QR code here, very cute one that will take you straight to our Discord. Mm, stick around for onboarding webinars if you're new to go here. There will be two more before the end of the year. We are also going to have uh, an upcoming hackathon literally next week about generative AI. So make sure to check it out. There are really cool prices and uh, yeah, another opportunity to build something else on Esco here. Uh, stay tuned because there will be also another episode of Talking Language AI series led by Jay Alamar before the end of the year, as well as Ask Me Anything session with Ed, our head of machine learning, which we've met um, at the beginning of the session. Other than that, thank you so much for coming. Thank you to our lovely presenters. You've been amazing. Love your demos. Um, let's take the discussion to Discord and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys.